You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. The TV. The TV. On the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. Hello, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another after show for NBC's The Voice, Season 5, Episode 7. The battle premieres. Yes! And the battles were crazy. The battles are amazing. But before we get into the battles, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Jason Eichler. I'm Chloe West. And I am Christian Rosenberg. And let's just hop right into just it. Just do it. Because there's so much to it. talk let's about. Battle. Team Adam <laughs> is up first. So Team Adam's guest mentor is Ryan Tedder from One Republic. Again, I think perfect pairing, which you wouldn't necessarily think the two go together since they're kind of competing bands. Mm-hmm. But they've both done so much in music. And Ryan Tedder has his name on literally every white person's album. <laughs> Yeah, he. That's about right. He was so smart in the way he was giving notes. I think Ryan's probably going to be. Ryan and Miguel, I think, are going to come up as the two strongest mentors because Ed Sheeran right now. Not is, much to say. Well, we'll Not talk, much to say. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about Ed in a little bit. Let's talk about Ed when we have to get to Ed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first up on Team Adam was Gray versus Nick Hawk. Gray was the girl who we kind of thought was boring, and Nick Hawk is the sassy gay guy. So much personality on stage. But I was actually impressed by their performance. They sang Domino by Jesse J. And I thought Gray had more personality when she was performing with Nick. Yeah, I think Nick, ha- I think she had to because he really brought that out of her if she wanted to, you know, show up at all. Um, yeah. And But her, she, I was surprised because honestly, before they started performing, I kind of went into it not liking her that much. And... I, her voice is pretty incredible, but I I love Nick. He was a standout for me. I'm very very glad that he was stolen because my heart was broken, much like his was. I was actually shocked that Adam picked Gray because I feel like yeah. Adam needs Adam needs the person that everyone's rooting for because I think that's what he lacks on his team. Like he doesn't have the character ever. Exactly, and that's why you don't I think like people will root for Gray. No. no. Really? I think she's too boring. She is, but she's forgettable. Well, she, no, yeah, she definitely started. We, I mean, we all talked about on the, um, the blind audition that, yeah, the personality kind of lacked some things. But we've seen people develop as the season goes on. We find out more of a story and we find out their. Like their personality, but in the midst of it, we see how talented of a singer they are. And this girl, I think, was the one I mentioned either a week or two ago that to me, she sounded a lot like Carrie Underwood. See, she's got a great voice, but yeah. it's more than just a great voice. I thought he took the song and he made it his own, and yeah, maybe she had better vocal on it. Mm-hmm. But are you going to remember Gray after tonight? No, and the thing is, when I was watching Nick, the whole time I'm like, I can't wait to see what else he's going to do. You know, I want to see his next performance. I didn't, I felt Gray's voice is very, very technically amazing. Yeah. She's re- a really good but singer. But at the same time, But Nick, I don't want to see her do anything yeah. else. And I feel like Nick's performance maybe got a little overshadowed by, by his personality when the judges were giving their comments. Because mm-hmm. the way he transitioned into his falsetto was so smooth and so clear. And his voice sort of reminds me of Nelly Furtado's in a way, where it's so different. I can see that. But, you know, it's a different uh, sound to it and a different tone, but very good. He's very talented, yeah, and I think his voice was sort of overlooked, but he was stolen and Blake sees it. That's why Blake does so good, because Blake can see, like, A, everybody in America is going to love him. Yeah. B, Blake needs the gaze on his team. Mm -hmm. And C, he's got a crazy good voice. Yeah, I think, I mean, even though Blake has won three and people are sort of not rooting for him, Blake has made really smart choices this season. Yeah, because he's trying to completely change his team. Yeah, this I, I'm just I'm just ecstatic that when it was all said and done, neither of them got eliminated, because I, I do want to see more of Gray. And I do, too. And I definitely want to see more of Nick. Just see, I like Gray as a singer, but I'm not like, ooh, I can't wait till her album comes out. Right. I think it, Adam will have to make an amazing song choice for her next time or else she's got 
gone. And I think she'll be gone in America's eyes. I'm actually really interested to see what everybody thinks of her because, you know, we could be totally off. Yeah, Daniel and, Bradbury, hello. Well, well, right. yeah, well let, me, let me ask you guys <laughs> this. When, uh, when Cassidy Pope won it in season three, were you guys after the battle run saying, I can't wait for her album to come out? Uh, honestly, she has more of a. She grew on me as the competition, mm -hmm. but she has a personality that you're drawn to. I think more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she Cassidy Pope has that like grit that that I like to connect with in singers. Um, so I think. Oh, and we've got a caller on the line. We got a caller on the line tonight. Let's bring him on, or her. How we doing? How we doing, guys? It's Andrew at the CSUA Kirk on Twitter. Hey. Oh, hey, Andrew. Just saw your tweet. What's going on? Not much. The, ba the battles were amazing tonight. Right. I know. What did you think of um, Gray versus Nick? I thought Adam was going to pick Nick. I really did. Um, they were both very good, though. I mean, I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Like, uh, like you said, Chloe, that had a Blake stole. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be yeah. a good choice. Were you? Whose team were you on last year? You were on Team Blake, right? Um, I was, he was, I was rooting for the Swan Brothers. Brothers. He was a Swan Austin, Brother guy I, mean, I, like, I liked Michelle. Okay. And I thought Michelle should have won last season. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. all, we uh, all but, um, but, I, I mean, I liked a lot of the artists on Team Blake. Who's this your favorite? I think Adam's to lose. Oh, interesting. Who's your favorite uh, so far? Well, she got eliminated tonight, so I love the 15-year-old off Christina <gasps> oh, Tamara, Tamara Joy. Tamara yeah. Joy. Oh, yeah, we're going we're we're to get to her momentarily because, yeah, I was furious with well, that one. Well, Andrew, thanks for calling and thanks for watching. Thank you, listening. Andrew. Thanks, buddy. We'll hope to hear from you later on in the season. Have a good one. Um, everybody, make sure you call. You can call in. Text. You can talk to us live. Give us your YouTube comments because it's lots of fun, and you can rate and subscribe us on iTunes. Go to AfterBuzz TV and download the iTunes Five podcast. Stars. Um, I like. I it was. It's interesting to hear. So Andrew, you know, connects with Nick as well. So. It's, you know, Gray's sort of missing that connection so far, it seems. Um, we'll find out on YouTube later what everybody else thinks. But uh, so far, you know, it's Nick is getting a lot of love. I agree. Um, so next up on Team Adam, Donna Allen versus Tessa Ann Chin. Oh my gosh. Woo. Okay, they sang Next to Me by Emily Sande. And I thought vocally great performance, but when we were watching it, they're both backup singers, and I don't think either of them stole the show for me. Totally. I and feel I was the kind same of, way. I was kind of bored, which is crazy, because they're doing all these sort of crazy runs in their performance, but I, I just I, didn't like it. I completely agree. It's, it's crazy to say, because as great as both of these singers are, and as great as performance both of them are, I think this was the worst performance of the night. But it wasn't bad at all. Well, and, and I just what? couldn't latch on to it. I was surprised Tessa Ann, I guess I'm not surprised she won because she's more marketable. But I thought vocally Donna gave it more. I felt like I was at church when she was singing. That's true, but honestly, yeah. I thought vocally Tessa, Tessa Ann really brought it. She did so many different things where Donna kind of did the same thing very, very well. Yeah. And I, I'm, it is interesting that we were sort of bored during this performance, but I think it's because what Christina said is that it was such a simple song. Yeah, it was it, really it, the it's song. It's an interesting song choice because I get what he's trying to do, like show, oh, their voices can still make it in a mainstream mm -hmm. sort of way, but I thought this was, there's so many better songs he could have chosen. Right, and uh, What's interesting is they have they both have huge personalities. So for us to sort of be like, eh, about the performance, I think says something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I really do think Tessa Ann, I mean, in this part especially, she when she broke it down like that, she did like I said, she just showed so many different qualities in her voice that I wasn't surprised she won. I was bummed because Donna is really great and I loved, I think having her on the show is amazing. And I wanted to see her was, sing a Tina Turner song, so yeah. I'm bummed she's gone from the competition, but. Getting, Donna and CeeLo would have been so right? perfect That would have been other. a good fit. But I don't know, I feel like, and I don't want to just comment on her age, but I feel like she's not very marketable. And yeah. you don't necessarily have her see her having a post voice we'll, career. We'll find out with the, um, you know, the other 50 year old, the uh, voiceover girl, when we get to her battle later yeah. on. You know uh, what? I think we'll if, she does. I think if Donna was maybe a songwriter, the yeah, judges would have connect her more. Yeah, they would have, you know, maybe connected to her and wanted to help her with her career, but I think because she is just she's coming from being a background singer and maybe not a songwriter, that yeah, her post voice career won't be as strong. I agree. 
Um, so Twitter is blowing up, but yeah, yeah. as it should. The guy that dressed me tonight just tweeted at me and wants to make sure he gets a shout out Norris Lloyd on Twitter. Put together my outfits. Oh, there very you go. Nice. Put together your outfits? Yeah, I sure do. There you go, Norris Lloyd Carey. Um, Buy me some more rose gear. I'll yeah, wear it. Somebody mm-hmm. needs to dress this Give guy. Give me some more roses. <laughs> so let's get into Team Hashtag Christina. I'm so excited for this. Her mentor is Ed Sheeran. Eh. I got to stick up for Ed. I know you Why? guys didn't like him because... I, he's just a shy guy. He's not meant to be a mentor. He's meant to get the younger audience to watch. Uh, yeah, I, That's why I totally, obviously, you see that. But I don't know. There's something about when they have a really great mentor. You know, when you saw with Ryan, he's giving them amazing notes. And last season with Pharrell, mm-hmm. you know, and Miguel this season, too. I mean, these mentors can really propel these people's but careers. honestly, Christina stepped up her mentoring so much oh, this yeah. season. Well, they yeah. don't need anyone else. Because yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Ed isn't saying a damn thing. And Christina is playing the role of I bet he's uh, like coach and like the side coach or whatever. I'm sure he's like, intimidated. She's like, no, just do it like this. And uh-huh. he's just like, oh, I'm a little redhead with a <laughs> <the> small voice. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> and I think you're right, though. I think Christina really stepped up her mentoring. But can we just be honest? I just want to hear Christina sing this entire oh show. Oh, my God. So her first she sang every song was Amber Nicole versus Tamira Joy. And oh they Lord. sang Listen by Beyonce from I'm just, Dream Girls. I'm just going to stand right now. Yeah. And I don't think we can swear on here, but holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. I've never... Probably the best battle round in all of The Voice. Honestly. Oh, I mean, the only thing I could think to possibly compare I remember with last season with J- Judith and Karina was so great, but this I think. But they're both it. so young and have voices. 15 that and powerful. 17. Yeah. And I'm kind of happy to see Amber Nicole more because we didn't really see her first audition. We didn't see her. Yeah, we didn't see her blinds at all. And she's so sweet, and her voice is, I think CeeLo described it the best, it's warm. She has well, a it's, warm yeah, voice. Yeah, it's, it's weird because they both have, like, Tamara has more of, like, a grunt to it, mm-hmm. but they complemented each other so well. And it, it felt like you were at their concert. It didn't feel like you were, I mean, it was very much a battle because they're both going crazy. Yeah. God. This was incredible. So amazing I from got beginning saved. to end. I'm I'm like excited to go home after and this re-watch and rewatch it. this Watch battle. Watch it download on iTunes just <laughs> over and over and over and over again. Seriously, this battle was incredible. I am excited to see more of Amber um, because I did want Tamara Joy to win this. Going into it. Going into it after the battle, I just had no idea. I'm really really upset that no, no judges stole her. Yeah, that's absurd. Let, let's talk about this because there was only was Christina the the only judge that turned around in a blind audition yeah. to begin with. And then she killed it in the blind audition. She killed it here. Literally such a waste because I feel like she could have gone on to win Are the they whole seeing thing. someone that no one else in America is seeing? Because this 15-year-old can sing with anyone. Yeah. I anyone. feel like when the judges watch it back, they're gonna be like, what the hell was I thinking? Right. Well, uh, did, was it Blake who said that at the end? He was like, I wish I would have thought about it and yeah. hit my button. Um, but like CeeLo? Why did CeeLo not turn around? I feel like. Or even Adam. Well, Adam Ad- needs a anyone, powerhouse vocalist. Like anyone. This. Adam, I can see Adam not turning around because he has some girls like this on his yeah. team already, like big power girls. But she could stomp Gray. I just, I just, oh, like, easily. Personality and who, yeah, wise. And that's who he has, and I would have. I would, you know what I mean? Put I just hope Usher, Usher was watching this at home just going. Uh, I know. Usher loves the young. Yeah, oh, Usher would have kept her, oh stole God. her. I really, she's I. She's so amazing. I think she'll be signed. She'll get a record deal. I hope so. Because she's so young and she's so talented. 15. And I like her. Like, I would buy her album. Oh, in a heartbeat. Yeah. And I mean, Amber Nicole just as good, and I'm super excited to watch her. Yeah. It's yeah, I'm, be great. I'm not trying to take anything away from Amber Nicole because she nailed it all. So she did a phenomenal job. And in the end, I think she did win this battle. But Tamira is just so good and so much The potential. only thing about Amber is she might be forgettable. I think she has a lot of spunk. I just think she, she, she I agree. I, I think agree. she I hope does. Christina can bring it out of her. That's the thing, and I don't know if the camera sees it. You see it a little bit yeah. in her because she's so sweet. But whereas Tamara Joy just comes across on camera, you yep. remember her. You, I remember what she wore. You know. I was actually shocked Christina didn't pick Tamara. I know you think that would have been her. I feel like that was her go-to yeah. kind of person, young powerhouse. But you, at the yeah. same time, you've got to hand it to her for basing it on the battle. That and what she said afterwards was that she picked Nicole because she wasn't as young. Yeah. Where normally I think they always kind of give the advantage to the younger singers on the show. At least they did last season 
Usher and I think Blake really well, and that's kind of what I'm admiring about the ones. voice from season to season is this like second season it was the girls with the small voice last mm -hmm. year it was country this year it's like big huge power voices and so I kind of like the way it's going I do too it it grows off of itself yeah which is really great so Christina's next match was Brianna Cuoco versus Jackie Lee mm -hmm. and they sang House of the Rising Sun another great battle Great battle, not blown away. Here's yeah. my thoughts. Well, not thought, well compared to I that thought one. Vocally, though. Jackie mm -hmm. Lee killed it. She mm -hmm. had the best yes. voice. Performance wise, I think it was Brianna's. Yes, totally. I agree. Brie had it. She had me. I want to see Brie sing. I want to hear Brie sing more songs. And I think what Blake said, the fact that you can tell she's a songwriter, she yeah. connects. I I would pay to see her in concert. I don't think I would go see Jackie in concert. Exactly. I think Jackie on the radio would be great. Listening to her, you know, you would like her, you would like hearing her voice. But when it comes to an artist quality, she didn't really have anything. Yeah, she hit the notes and she was amazing. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, she's a great singer. But I'm not gonna I wouldn't buy her album. I wouldn't go see her show yet. You know, maybe we'll see Christina. I think bring if she can turn her. up some spunk, she's got a crazy good voice. I'm excited to see Brianna go on Team Blake because I think mm -hmm. he'll help her pull it back a little bit. Because oh. her runs get a little sloppy when she mm -hmm. I mean she's got an incredible voice, but I do think she needs to take more of a singer songwriter route. Well, and to be honest, as a singer-songwriter, country music, or at least having some country influence, right now, the way people buy music, that's, that's the way to thing. sell. Yep. Because most most music that's bought, most people who buy music now, are it's country. They're buying country well, and music. And I'd actually like to hear her do like a Casey Musgraves song. Oh, yeah. Just something oh, yeah. super simple. Mm -hmm. and well, yeah, well, with me, with uh, when it comes to Jackie, I'm actually kind of going with what you were saying a moment ago, and the fact that... To me, Jackie seems forgetful until she until you. I'm like, all soon you see her singing, it's like, yeah. oh wait, that's that girl who does right. that stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we'll go away, you know, like we'll go tune in tomorrow's show, and I'm gonna forget who she is again until I see her singing. Like, oh wait, this is that great singer. You know what? what? I forgot about her. It's because of her song choices. She did an Amy Winehouse, which she is not Amy Winehouse. No. no. And then this is so too rock and roll for her, and she's so not rock and roll. I mean, look at Brie. But Brie just you, this is Brie's rock and roll. song. Yeah. But Brie has a distinguished look. She has a distinguished sound, mm -hmm. and I feel like Jackie. He almost has this thing that Gray has where she's a pretty white girl with a good voice. Right. And right. I'm over it. And I think I said that same exact thing last week. You know what? But I think if Jackie sang maybe like a Katy Perry song, like Firework, which is a very hard song to yeah. sing, I think maybe that would bring out her natural personality. And I'd actually, I'd really like to see something like that because it would give her spunk and she could be fun. And if she could conquer Katy Perry, then I would be a fan. And there's like a weird thing on The Voice where I think Katrina always talked about it when she was here, but nobody's advanced on after singing a Katy Perry song. Oh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's an odd Katy stat. Perry curse. Katy Perry, Pink, Rihanna, three incredibly hard well, and, people to, yeah. you but those know, songs, do their especially, songs. Especially, maybe not as much Pink, but those songs aren't meant to be heard live. Like Katy Perry and Rihanna, they're very produced for radio mm -hmm. with lots of effects. Has on Katy voice. Perry ever performed live on The Voice? No. No. Well, she should do that. She did a video curse. last year for Amber. <laughs> oh, that's right, she did. Like the Amber little, like, that little like then went tidbit home. to say hi. Yeah, it's very interesting. Really, the Katy Perry voice curse. Yeah. Ooh. I know, that's crazy. I'd, I'd crazy. love to hear, viewers, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, please. And there's, there's got I'm sure there's someone who made it, and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I'd love to hear it. Someone's um, typing, that someone's up, typing right now, yeah. this happened in season two. Exactly. In person. <laughs> that wraps up Team Christina, and I've still got to say, it's Christina's game this year. It, it is. Yeah. We haven't even, I mean... <laughs> Matthew still hasn't gone yet. No, but her, right, right. I think oh, she's Matthew. so invested, and her coaching is just crazy, crazy good this year. Better than it's ever been, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, all of the notes she was giving, I think her singers can connect to them. Yep. You know, she's really making sure that they're understanding her. Yeah, because she doesn't just give a note; she demonstrates it in her voice. She'll demonstrate it, and then you know, I think the BB King thing. I think saying other singers that they need to sort of be like really hits yeah. home with them and then they can connect it in their mind and she was so excited when Brie was stolen it was so sweet yeah um and and she picked up Anthony 
Oh. She also stole an artist tonight. Yes. And he's a great which, singer. Which, yeah, we'll and I, talk about I'm him excited to too. talk about him too because we haven't really seen anybody no. young in R and B in one of these competitions. Yeah, not a young not a young guy. Lots yeah. of young girls. But the guys for some reason don't. I think really they come across make as corny usually. Yeah. I mean, they're not yeah. usually not as skilled vocally as the young girls, but he was crazy. Yeah, amazing. like their their just body like isn't ready to yeah. develop that type of sound. <laughs> Dr. Christian. <laughs> That's right. Um, let's get into Team Blake. Speaking of bodies and development. Um, <laughs> Speaking of bodies, Shelby Z. I don't know, I don't know what yeah. the hell just happened. So first up was Justin Chain versus Shelby Z. And they right. sang, Don't You Want to Stay by my girl Kelly Clarkson. And Jason Aldean. And some other country guy. Oh, no. Uh, some Jason's other great. Country guy. No, he's good. Jason's um, great. I was actually very underwhelmed by this performance because I was super excited going into it. I thought Justin had really good tone, but he didn't sustain any of the notes at the mm. end of his phrases, and mm -hmm. so it just kind of fell short for me. I thought as soon as Shelby came in, the song picked up a little bit. Yeah. And then it got better, but even the first chorus, I was kind of just like, oh, okay. I think this song is a hard song to, with, in a battle round, because it's a duet, and you know, there's two of them singing. And it's so current. It's so current, but I think it's a hard song to do anything different with because it's already written as a duet. Yep. When a song isn't written as a duet and two people have to sing it, I think they can really bring themselves to it. But this is so hard to get out of that, so they have to sing it exactly yeah. how the song and is. And where were they coming right here? It just is like, okay, it's pretty, but it's See, not blown I, away. I, right. I enjoyed this. I thought it was I thought it was a fun duet. But don't I, I think they look uncomfortable with each he, other. And I disagree. Being, I, I disagree with that. Really? I, I thought they had I thought they had a nice connection a little bit. I mean, even like the beginning when he was like um, rubbing his finger along her cheek. I uh, mean, Christina. See, I thought that was contrived. I think. And yeah. I thought they just yeah. looked awkward. See, Christina yep. even mentioned like, like you guys I should want, be a duet. No. no see, I want to believe that they're gonna have sex. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's and what the song not. is about, and I don't believe it. Uh, he, this is a bad song choice for Justin. I think that he is the type of country singer that sings, he can do like a George Strait song, yeah. but he's not, He. I don't think he can connect to being heartbroken, you know, any kind of like a whiskey lullaby type exactly. thing. And he's kind of not dirty and sexy enough to do, you know, one of the sexy bar country songs well, that we've been hearing a lot from the guys, like men in country music sing right now. So I think he just, I think like made the right choice to be well, honest. And it's interesting too because they said like, oh, Justin didn't get to belt on his part as much as Shelby we did, but they left out the it feels so perfect. Oh, I feel so yeah. that part. The and what part? The what part? <laughs> so you feel so perfect, <laughs> so baby. perfect. Um, <laughs> And they left that out, and that's the part where they both get to belt, and I don't know why they cut that out. I, they probably just couldn't do it as well. Maybe, maybe they just oh. couldn't get it ready in rehearsal in time. Honestly, it sort of did, compared to all the other performances tonight, where the vocalists made the song their own, blew the song out of the water. This one, because it was so much like the Kelly Clarkson, Jason Aldean, and just not as good, yeah. uh, it was just underwhelming. I will say all the Kelly Clarkson talk really excites my body. Oh my god. <laughs> just saying. I'm very glad. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Nobody stole Justin. Nope. Which I'm not surprised. Don't care. You sort of think Adam always has his finger yeah. for any country singer. Like, he's just itching at the button. But I think it was a good one. Well, yeah, because well, yeah. well, she, Shelby has a lot more versatility. Than, oh, than for Justin. sure. Well, and she's cute as a button. Oh, you she's just adorable. Love her. She's she adorable. got so much spunk. And yeah. I, don't remember, I didn't remember Justin. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think tonight. this is going to be this is going to be really rude to say. I know just it's say rude. It. <laughs> but I think people will relate to... Her in story. country music, Her story. no, no, no. In country music, people can relate to Shelby more than they'll because she's like super cute and spunky. I like her, and I want to see more of her. We're like Justin isn't like a sexy country guy, and I think that people, if he's, if you're not Zach Brown, I think it's too hard to, you know, you have to be you have like, to own you it. have to be sexy and gritty and dirty in country music to be a male, or you have to be like. A sweet teddy bear like Zach Brown, and because he was neither, I just think people aren't. I think country music doesn't relate to you. 
Because he, he just came off a little shy and unconnected. Well, that and like the women who listen to country music when we listen to a con- when we listen to a guy sing a country song, you're falling in love with him. Yep. And he just wasn't connecting. And so then the other type is, you know, you're singing, you're connecting with the guys, but I just don't think guys really connect with him either. You know, he wasn't like be. He, they're not like, oh, I'm like well, you. Well, or he, I mean, yeah. he, he has both the look and sound of like your generic old school country type singer. But do you know what the difference mm. is? Those people when they sing a song tell a story. Mm-hmm. And I didn't I didn't believe anything he was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just his personality I, wasn't there. I don't know. I, I I still disagree as far as the performance. I mean definitely Shelby blew him out of the water as far as the performance um, aspect, but I thought the two of them did well together. Uh, wrong. <laughs> You're wrong, Christian. Okay. I guess I should go. All right, let's go to Team CeeLo. <laughs> so CeeLo's guest mentor was Miguel. Oh, love him. He's so sexy. I know. So sexy. He's like the masculine version of Prince. <laughs> Which is perfect. He's straight. We looked it up. Sorry. Um, Not his, sorry. <laughs> his first pairing I'm kind of was... different on this. Christian, what, would you, what team do you want him to play on? What team do I? No. What team do I want Miguel to play on? Mm, uh, let's talk. You know about what? I want him to be. I want him to. Um, Date to like Chloe. To what? I, I was gonna Jason. say. You guys, Pharrell got married. P.S. I'm really Glad upset. <laughs> hey, it's kind of relevant. He was on last got, season. Yeah. Um, just just want to put that out there. First battle. I'm glad we got out my yeah. answer. Okay. <laughs> Anthony Paul versus Caroline Pennell, and they sang "As Long as You Love Me" by Justin Bieber. Which song choice? I was like, uh oh, why? I know. And Justin then Bieber? they came out and killed it. The arrangement Amazing. was like a hundred times better than Justin Bieber's. Well, and it's so weird because during the coaching, I was like, oh, this is for sure going to be Caroline's battle. Well, they fell in love. You can tell Miguel fell in love with, with her, her as soon as she sang her like the first "As Long as You Love Me." He lit up. He had a big smile on his yep. face, and they were like, "Ooh, I like her. I like her." And poor Anthony, who felt very comfortable with the song at first because he's like, "Oh, this is my wheel." house this is what I, I will be singing in his head is a little bit he got in his head during rehearsal because they were so in love with her but he brought it in the well, performance and you know watch when he's did. performing he's so careful in all the choices he makes like he's got so much control over his voice mm-hmm. but she has this quality like a young Florence in the machine I'm getting lost in her. Yes. and I'm getting lost yes. in her eyes she is a young Florence yep. exactly completely but he's I want to see him do well because we haven't had anybody like this on any of the music no, competition shows no we haven't and and like, yeah, you know that he can do like the fast pace, upbeat, kind of like power and beat stuff. But then he's got like the gentle side. With he's the a young usher. And he has like these smooth, really soft yeah. ones. But her, I don't know. I, I would, I would like to see both of them win it. Either of them. Yeah. I love um, them both. I watching this. Per- I loved this battle round. I loved watching it. They reminded me of like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. And I wanted them to make out at the end because <laughs> their just quality together was so great. But he is a young usher, and I think that they need to take advantage yep. of. Him being so talented, being a great a great R and B singer, and well, being so young. I'm so excited to see him on Team Christina. She stole him when Caroline won. Yeah, and so great. She is gonna mold him to just be powerhouse. This, this is my one problem with that. What? The only problem I have with him being on Team Christina is, say Matthew advances out of the battle round. Who is he gonna face in the knockout? Him. I don't, I don't think, think Christina so. would do that. You don't. I think you she think would put him against keep, a girl. You think she'd try to keep two? R and B singers. Uh, Matthew is more of like a R and B rock, Soul, like a yeah. little bit more Bruno Mars. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this guy is very like, I don't, I don't know. I, I think he might be a little bit better than Matthew, honestly. Technically, Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to, I, we, we'll have to watch Matthew's I mean, battle around. He's got a ton of talent. And he's, he's so talented. Young, and I think that's. I want to hear him sing a Mariah song. I think he's technically. One, hey, Whoa. one sweet day, anybody. <gasps> oh. Boys to Men, he definitely needs to sing some Boys to Men. Yeah, but that's Mariah and Boys, so that'll be I like know. a double. He's, but he's so technically good that he, I think he would really study it and really hit the notes and really yep. sing it well. And he's from Show Choir. <laughs> I show feel choir. bad for him. Yeah, for Show Choir. He needs, they need to stop mentioning that so, every Car- time they introduce Car- him. Carson Daly, here's the Show Choir guy and, and Carol and shy. here's the shy girl. God, <laughs> their intros are so corny. They do need to work on they those intros. That. Carson, Come step on. up your game, buddy. Aww. Come on, Carson. We love you. But Carson, you got this. You got this, Carson. So that wraps up. That's everyone. all the battles this tonight. Yeah, we there were six. only six. 
It's crazy because it, it's a two-hour episode, but like there's so much backstory. But I love that. I love seeing Me too. them being coached and all the notes. Yeah. I love the backstory, and I think that Miguel gave really good notes. You know, and Miguel was great. He's great. And I'm, I'm like blown away by Ryan Tedder's notes yeah. too. Ryan was Ryan. great too. And Ryan was saying notes before Adam. Yeah. You know, sometimes the mentors sort of wait to see what the coaches are going to say, and then they'll come in with and either add on to it or just bring something new. Um, but yeah, other than that, although we need to talk about Cher's wigs, they were amazing. Oh my god, yes, <laughs> they uh, were Cher, I, I feel like Cher is not going to be like a great coach, but she's so fun to watch. And I, her banter matter. with Blake. I like the banter about Adam. Yep. <gasps> that was amazing. I love Adam. Oh, well, well what's your favorite Maroon Five song? I I like, I all like of them. them all. <laughs> so funny. You know, though, she had good notes for Shelby when she said when she noticed that oh, she yeah, was getting nervous. Hi. And that Shelby was clamping down to, you know, even just think high and really open up your voice that way. So I think that, I think Cher's going to be great. Yeah. I would actually like to see Ryan Tedder judge one of these competitions after this, mm -hmm. though. Oh. Because if you think about it, he, Adele, well, Kelly Clarkson, well, if Adam, Adam Lovato, Beyonce, if Adam ever took, the, if Adam ever took, a, if Adam ever took a season off, he'd be the perfect guy to replace Adam. Yeah. I really want to see three guy, three girls, one guy judging this show. That'd That's be fun. the that then would be, be the like next one for me. Completely copying X Factor right now, though. So maybe that would be bad. Oh, true. But we need to see a female country yeah. singer. I think. I, agree. I think that needs to be one of the next judges. Some female country. Get Blake Reba back. I was going to say, Real get Blake this Reba. season off and put Miranda in there. Miranda would oh, be great. I'd love to see Miranda. But Miranda's so sweet that I don't know if she would be able to be, a, like, I don't know how much good of a coach she'll because be. Because I feel like Miranda's either really sweet or she's going to fight you. I don't know. I think she gives that personality when she sings, but I think she sort of has a Sasha Fierce where, okay. you know, she's sweet. But I don't know. I don't know Miranda, so I could be <laughs> totally wrong. I, um, do you guys want to get into some news and gossip? Let's do it. Yes. After Buzz TV News. So not a whole lot happening in The Voice. No, but uh, Cassidy Pope's album came out, and it is incredible. It's really, really great. I you can think, get it on iTunes, you can yeah. get it at Target. And she's on the radio, and she's really the first person to come out of The Voice and have a big career. Yeah. And awesome. I, I really hope she does well. Yeah. Katrina Parker's album is still out, everybody. You can also get that online, um, which she funded via Kickstarter, which is really cool. And friend of The Voice, friend yeah, of After friend Buzz. of After Buzz. We're going to get her back in here this season. Yes, too, we are. So. Yeah. I think that's all of our news and gossip, right? That's really it. Short, right. sweet, to the point. Let's get into some predictions. <laughs> What are we predicting now? Tonight? Who You're just two from tonight TV. do you think will make it to the live rounds? For, okay, so from the six people that have, or yep, just from these battle rounds, yeah. who will advance to the live? Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. Caroline, duh. Well, Carol are you only picking? Are we only picking one? I'm gonna pick one, Caroline, for sure. Car I mean, obviously there will be more, yeah. but I'm saying 100%. Caroline will be top four. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm gonna say Nick. Yeah, I feel like Nick's fun. Um... I'm going. If you say gray. Yeah, uh, thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you, uh, Phil. I need a second here. Fill in the booth, everybody. Phil, tech, everyone. I didn't think of this one. Because they're all. Everyone was so good tonight. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know you, and I'm going to say gray gets the live rounds. Ew. Oh, no. I'm going to go push myself down a flight of stairs after well, I think, oh. well, here's the thing. I think I picked last week. I think I said Tamira was going to represent. <laughs> <be the> <laughs> I, I, th I think last week I said Tamira will be the last one standing off Christina's team, and clearly I was right about that. True. So Christian is always wrong, and we'd like you, everybody, and to remind season, him. And last season, last season, had the best out of the three quiet, of us. I'm talking. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> everybody, remind Christian he's wrong. Christian, how can they remind you? Well, you can tell me how you f um, have faith in me and that I can bounce back from this week by following me on Twitter at crosyvoc and also checking out me uh, as I host Friday Night Smackdown on Friday Night After Buzz as well as Eastbound and Down on Sundays. Um, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Chloe West X. And I will also be there on YouTube answering your guys' comments. Perfect. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Jason Eichler. And I just started a new blog, JasonInLA.com. So please check that out. And we will all be back in here next week.
From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.